So I, I now request Ms. Uh, Romy Roy, DDA, DDA, Deputy Director DDA, to present the vision of TOD and introduction to TOD policy, which will be followed by a presentation by Ms. Mriganka Saxena, our senior consultant, on TOD workshop series prepared, proposed to be conducted. So I request. Ashok ji, aapne Romy Roy ko bola Deputy Director Architecture, please also say senior consultant. Good morning, everyone. Um, today, uh, I'll be presenting about the principles of uh, transit-oriented development. It's something that's being discussed all over the country. And uh, I'll try to give the basic principles that constitute. That constitute the policy document that is there in all your folders. Um, we thought we'll start with portraying the life of the common man, Mr. Lakshman, R.K. Lakshman's common man, what he goes through, all of us, at least we, all of us. Uh, so starting with a ride to school with your children, uh, then stuck in a traffic jam on the way to office, trying to get a meal which is 30 rupees and uh, standing in line to pay that and get your lunch during office hours. Uh, trying to get back home again in back-to-back -back bumper traffic. Uh, trying to go shopping again because once you come back home, then you have to go out to buy your errands, uh, do your errands. Some of the footpaths are not there, so you might get a sprain or so in the process. Um, so that's sort of something that uh, most of us who use public transport go through on a daily basis. So we want to paint a slightly different picture for Mr. Lakshman's common man, that maybe he has a nicer, pleasanter walk to the metro station or the bus station in the morning. He has a nice small plaza where he can sit and have lunch with his friends. Uh, he doesn't have to drop his children to school in his two-wheeler because his children have a safe cycling route to go and come back from school, so he can relax his new read his newspaper at lunch. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about going again on a in a car to shop shop because he can just shop on the way back home from the metro station. And on the weekend when he can spend his extra salary, he's happy, you know, spending his money. So uh, I think what we are trying to say is that uh, we need to bring happiness back into public life, into our life in the city. And that's what the goal of this policy is. So it's a paradigm shift in planning. Like here you can see uh, Mr. Common Man is the smallest thing in this whole thing. It's a metro station dominated by cars and large roads. There's almost no infrastructure for pedestrians. So the poor man, he's standing there. But in the same metro station, this you can see it's a, how the same metro station could be transformed into a place which accommodates everyone and it's centered around this common man. He is the hero of the picture and not the parked cars. So that is the theme of the policy. So to achieve this, we are looking at three major components that uh, tie into these aspects. One is social, economic, and environmental. And this is what sustainability comprises of. And it's a common agenda. It has to be a common agenda. If it's not, it's not going to work. So all the departments of DTA and GNCTD and other uh, non-profit, non-government agencies we all have to work together if we want to make our common man happy. Otherwise, we will not achieve that dream for him. So the vision that his common man could have is probably these five things, which is having a safer city, a greener city, getting around easily, feeling civic pride in the city, and being democratic and inclusive. In a safer Delhi, now we are all uh, aware of the issues of women in the capital, uh, how serious they are. And uh, one of the major issues that causes this lack of safety is this situation, which is there in almost 80% of the city, which is having these dead boundary walls, which are almost uh, public urinals, and having no eyes on the street, having no one watching the footpath where a girl is walking. So this, could it be something like this, where you have your, um, your infrastructure, you have your hawkers, or you have retail, or some active use, this, uh, this is a montage from ITO, which has recently got very major, in, uh, major investments in infrastructure. We've got all our footpaths made in granite and very nice crossings. It's a pleasure to walk in ITO today. But yet, 
uh, even working in ITO, we are not able, we don't have a chemist shop. So if we fall sick, we can't go and buy medicines. We don't have a small cafe. If we want to go and get coffee at seven o'clock when everybody has left the office, we can't go. So uh, the only making infrastructure doesn't, does it make a place a place? It probably doesn't. So putting in those utilities, which uh, make it a vibrant place. This is another picture of South Delhi, a major corridor. How can a girl feel safe here at seven? Um, can we imagine this to be different? Could this have uh, maybe the night shelters, which we keep talking about? Or we could have, say, like offices and uh, some cafes under it. It's a huge amount of space which is just lying vacant and they are just adding unsafety to the city. Can we imagine the city dif differently? Uh, this also adds activity at night when the street is deserted. So can we think of it that way? So one of the major principles that comes out out of the safety issue is that we have to create what we call the eyes on the street. So this this project, this view, which is an existing view of a station, has no eyes on the street. After seven, the parking lot is empty. It's a deserted, unsafe place. This, even when the office building closes, the shops are going to remain till nine, open till nine. People are going to walk home along because it's a nicer footpath. So it's going to remain vibrant and safe. So look, imagining the city to be safer and a nicer place to be in. Hawkers accommodating in the design that we have to have the informal sector in the design. So the social goal too is to have greenery. Now, what does that mean? Uh, this is a park in Lajpat Nagar, which is so well used because all the parks are small and the mother doesn't have to come out, take her children out, or doesn't have to have an ayah take the children out. And they're safe, it is so vibrantly used, the old people are there. Uh, this is a different type of park, understanding the urban park, like do we have green spaces in our urban areas, like again in ITO, I keep going back where we work, do we have an urban park where we can go and mingle? Yes, there are green spaces where we see about 50 men every day standing and sitting and having lunch uh, next to the river, but I don't see a single woman in that park. So it's not an inclusive space. How can we make spaces inclusive? Because we need, again, eyes on the public space to make it safe and inclusive. Then another major function of a park, which is an environmental issue, uh, which is uh, dis discussed very often, is that how, uh, why not put parking under parks? Khali pada hai park, uske niche parking bana dete Now, uh, parks consume about 15% of the land area of any neighborhood, maximum 15%. That is the only lung, the only catchment we have where we can absorb water, where we ground water recharge kar sakte. Uske niche bhi hum parking bana denge, to pani flood hoga, jab barish hogi, to bohat tez flood hoga, jo ho raha hai, do ghante ke barish ke baad flooding ho jati hai. Aur uh, fir hum sochte hai ki drain saaf nahi kiya, decent nahi kiya. But actually this is the problem that we are just paving over our city, so the water is not able to infiltrate. We can design these, this is a retrofit proposal. We can design a park so that it can have parks, greens along the roads, which can catch the water, filter it, clean it, put it in, in the same place. This is a win-win situation for everybody. Crown water table, this is a park retrofitted for stormwater management. The water table will gradually rise up and relatively fast it rises up once this is done. And it will also add greenery. It will be a breathing space for the city. So thinking about our open spaces differently. Uh, third goal was getting around easily. Our common man wants to get around without really dying under the bojh of commute every day. So um, how is he commuting? How is our common man commuting? So if we see the figures, they're actually quite astounding. Because we can see that about 35% people are only walking. So these are not including the trips that he's making to catch a metro or a bus. This is an only walk trip. So he may be going to the market or doing some other stuff, other errands on foot. And about uh, astounding 27% are using buses. So they are the dominant modes. And the other modes are sort of much less, but most of our design and infrastructure, as we know, is going, the investment goes in the lesser mode, which is the car and the two-wheeler. And now coming to the bus, the bus is basically stuck in a jam. So the, we have been in the coming, in the past few years, because the metro has worked so efficiently, we've seen a reverse mode shift. We metro that hopefully the shift the cars, the buses are so uncomfortable and so crowded that the bus riders are shifting to metro and the car people are still in their cars and they are all uh, adding to the pollution, the air pollution. 
Now, uh, this is another interesting uh, set of uh, data that we have from the rights report. How, how is the travel pattern, even jo public transport use kar rahe, usme kya ratio hai? We see that in the public transport, only 10% are using metro, and these are main, mainly, the, mainly the commuters which are traveling more than 10 kilometers. And this has been validated by DMRC as well. And uh, the bus riders are doing 2 to 10 kilometer trips, and most people, so about 50% of the population of the city is actually traveling by foot or cycle or cycle rickshaw. But the, again, are we designing for this sector is the question we are asking. Uh, one more thing is that uh, agar hum planning dekhen ki, how is the planning of the city uh, promoting these modes that we have just seen. So this is a typical neighborhood. Now, agar mujhe is neighborhood se, if I want to come here or if I go, want to go from here to this neighborhood, I actually cannot go most probably because the Either there will be a gate or there will be no connection from this neighborhood going directly. So every mode has to come to the major arterial road to get to the, even to cross the road. So uh, this is another issue in planning that we have seen at a larger scale that the inter-neighborhood uh, connectivity is something that needs to be improved. And as, as the policy we will discuss, we will discuss how this can be improved. So when, when everything is coming on the arterial road, so this is how the arterial road becomes. It just becomes full of vehicles. Now when we have so many vehicles, then we have to go quickly, then we have to signal free. Kar dete hai. Jab unko signal free, kar dete hai, the, the man, the guy, the common man can't even cross the street. So he can't pick up his child whose his school is across the street. So he has to take an auto to cross the street. And we know a lot of people here who actually take an auto to cross streets. So, uh, and this is, again, this is police data. It's showing that how this is actually happening. Police gave us this data, data last year. All the signal-free corridors have recorded a huge increase in number of deaths. And all the names are given, and it is really scary. So we have to think of retrofitting them, getting signalization back, getting our cross-neighborhood connections done, getting better connections to public transport. So now we, we are coming down in scale. So we've gone to plan. Now we're coming down to block. We'll go down to building. So this is a typical block. Say a developer has taken this plot. This is a road network that's there. If uh, my bus stop is here, the red dot is the bus stop, and my house is here, I don't have, the developer has closed the road. I can't walk or take a cycle rickshaw. It's going to be probably really long. So automatically, I will get off. I'll take an auto to get home from the station or the bus stop. But can this be different? This could have been, if we have a street network like this, that person who took 15 minutes to get to the home could probably reach in two minutes. So it's just a question of doing a design change. And we have almost design change. We have only put a street network. So this is the advantage of having a finer network. It creates more walkability, less vehicles on the road, which is better. Now coming down to the street level. Here, uh, this is in East Delhi, where almost 60-70% of people use non-motorized transport, public transport, and walk. Yet, you can see the amount of public realm of private parking has been given. Now, we show you the transformation. If you see before and after, the people who are in the middle and or same hai. It's either same and more. So it's not that we've reduced the number of people or the crowd and the thing. But we have just designed the edge in a way that the parking, the gadi is still there, but he has been given a designated space where he has to pay an hourly fee. So the turnover, abhi ye jo parking hai, ye mahino tak khadi rehti hai. But when you charge it and the turnover increases, then he will say, okay, I'll park only for half an hour or one hour. And we, we have given off-street parking facilities for the shopkeepers. So the public realm frees up for all these other modes that we want to. We want our common man to be happy. So we want to give him this sort of a public realm. So then coming down to the last, which is the building level, this is actually a project and next to a metro station. Metro station, where we are assuming that the person is get it is actually a DMRC project, most probably, I don't know. But um, we are assuming that we are coming off the metro and trying to enter the building. Where do I enter? I don't even see the pedestrian entry. So it is also at the building norms level that we can see that the norms are not encouraging a public realm, a building edge, where the pedestrian is metro se utar ke aara hai, wo welcome ho or feel kare ki, Haan, let me the building is welcoming me. Wo feeling nahi hai. At the same time, Kya building aise ho sakti hai, jahan pe gaadi bhi enter ho rahi hai comfortably. But the person who's coming on the bus is also getting a beautiful public run to walk. So this building is welcoming everybody equally, not just one person, not just one user. 
सिविक प्राइड ये बहुत बार हमने मीटिंग्स में सुना है कि दिल्ली को कोई प्यार नहीं करता सब यहाँ पे आते हैं काम के लिए फिर वापस चले जाते हैं नो बड़ी लव्स द सिटी वी डोंट लव द सिटी बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स वी डोंट हैव अ प्लेस वेर वी कैन सिट एंड फील हैप्पी एंड सम ऑफ इट हैज हैव लाइक स्पेंड सम टाइम इन अदर एरियाज लाइक इन मुंबई इफ वी गो वी सी पीपल इन्जॉइंग द हाई टाइड स्टैंडिंग देर Uh, when to Hyderabad, uh, if you go to uh, that Hussain Sagar Lake, kids are just laughing and feeling happy. Um, I don't see that. At least our team hasn't seen that happening in any other place except for India Gate in Delhi. So can we create more Hussain Sagars and Kankadia Lakes of Ahmedabad and uh, Bombay K uh, Marine Drives? So can we have? Can Delhi give uh, uh, such places to our city? Can we give such places to? Uh, our city. It's something we need to think about. Uh, this is a montage that you'll see outside as well. It's a before and after diya hua hai. So um, this is our Nala corridors. Uh, being in Utepec, we get every month, maybe every week, every month, an article to hear that Nala cover and there is parking on it. Can we imagine the Nala as a public space which connects neighborhoods and gives this breathing green space which is accessible and inclusive? again this is something that we can think about because space is rare so the green space we have can we use it in a way that is inclusive this is a fantastic area in bombay which is carter road promenade where you'll find anybody from a politician to a film star to a slum uh, dweller to anybody will be hanging out here there is no sense of uh, discrimination it's the most equitable public space so can delhi aim for such uh, public spaces and last social growth which is inclusive which brings us to the issue which is another big issue which is housing where do i live so we got this data from um, uh, through one of our uh, advising firms micro home solutions which works with seva they dug out this data from us from the center of monitoring indian economy consumer pyramids it's very interesting uh, what this data shows ki hamari demographic ki earning kya hai so above 60000 which is the current housing market ka jo ghar product milta hai market mein basically is the green thing green is what the product available by a developer driven model that is the product that's available but the majority population is earning this about 50% of the population is earning 5000 to 30000 rupees a month uh, about 25% 22% earning 30 to 60000 and about 5% are earning 5000 rupees per annum sorry per month so जब सॉरी जब भी डिस्कशंस में हम बात करते हैं या तो हम वी टॉक अबाउट द डेवलपर ड्रिवन मार्केट और वी टॉक की लेट्स गिव हाउसिंग एंड शेल्टर्स व्हाट अबाउट दिस मिडिल क्लास व्हाट आर वी डूइंग अबाउट दिस मिडिल क्लास व्हिच इज द मेजॉरिटी नाउ व्हाट इज द इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ नॉट एड्रेसिंग द मेजॉरिटी मेजॉरिटी द डिवेलपर इज प्रॉबेबली डजन हैव इनफ इंसेंटिव टू डिलीवर दीज रेंटल एंड लो स्टार्टर होम जिसको हम बोलते हैं काफ़ी जगह पे स्टार्टर होम इज बेसिकली आइर एन एफिशंसी यूनिट अ स्टूडियो अपार्टमेंट और अ वन बेडरूम अपार्टमेंट वेर अ यंग मैरिड कपल यंग प्रोफेशनल इज अ कॉस्मोपॉलिटन सिटी फॉरनर्स आर कमिंग टू वर्क हेयर सो वी कैन गिव दैट मार्केट बट दिस नीड्स टू बी इंसेंटिवाइज अदरवाइज द डिवेलपर इफ ही इज ऑलरेडी कंस्ट्रेंट ही इज गोइंग टू स्टिक टू हिज सेफ मार्केट सो अनलेस वी मेक इट सेफ फॉर हिम टू इन्वेस्ट इन दीज टाइप्स क्या होता है कि जो हम लो इनकम हाउसिंग फिर बनाते हैं 25 स्क्वायर मीटर का वो मिडिल क्लास खरीद लेती है एंड देर फोर द लो इनकम गाय हु एक्चुअली नीड्स दैट पच्चीस का घर इज गोइंग एंड लिविंग इन अस्लम सो इट्स अ विशेष साइकिल इट्स अ हाउसिंग मार्केट दैट नीड्स टू बी एड्रेस्ड इन अ टोटैलिटी एंड नॉट इन नॉट इन पीस मील देन दिस वन ऑफकोर्स वी आर वेल अवेयर दैट इन द सेवेंटीज दैट ड्यूरिंग द एशियर एक्सेट्रा the people were displaced the poor were displaced to the outskirts of the city and we have to hopefully stop doing that it's still happening to an extent that uh, we don't we need to replace slums but not slum dwellers we have to keep the poor included in our communities so this is how the picture of inclusive community plan could look like that all types of units and incomes and uses are there in one station area or one catchment area so it's about inclusive planning um and just to touch upon this issue that uh, we know that the housing market is pretty much moving to gurgaon and uh, the retail market is moving to noida and delhi is losing out so we need to catch this market and when this policy draft was floated about 6 months back economic times covered this article and about the tod policy and they said that uh, some of the lead uh, firms urban economics firms and 
uh, experts said that property prices in Delhi are too high today and the only way they will come down is by increasing supply. And Delhi has failed to give housing to the common man due to limitations of FAR and density norms and it also aided the creation of slums. If FAR is freed, land cost development will come down and bringing down property prices. So we need to explore and work with the market rather than fight the market and yet get what we want out of it. So this is a pilot project that we are taking out. You must have seen the boards outside. Uh, it's in Karkar Duma, East Delhi, where we are looking at exploring all these types of units and we'll work with some local developers and see the feasibility of whether these work on home twent houses. They are just the opposite. Our apartments, studio apartments, dorms, hostels, night shelters. Can they coexist? What is the viability of each mode? So uh, now coming to the issue that we, why are we discussing all this and then this is a TOD workshop. So what is TOD? So it's basically very simple. It's restructuring the city based on public transit. And uh, the basic guiding principle is that maximum people live, work, and play within five to 10 minutes walking distance of an MRT station. And the definition of MRT is that we have taken, we're still under discussion, but it's uh, we're considering it to be any mode that has ridership of more than 30,000 PHPDT. So uh, it's uh, basically all these visions, we are hoping that through our norms and through this planning paradigm, we will achieve this. And uh, I'm going to just summarize how the policy will aim to achieve these. Uh, it's, of course, looking at high density. I'll just come to those. So this is the current master plan. And when uh, the overlay of the MRTS overlays, so this is how the concentrated portion comes in. This is how the plan morphs into a different animal altogether. How does it look like in three dimensions? So we thought we'll test it for ourselves. So we took the urban extension and we applied the current, current zoning code, which is there for the urban extension four zones. This is the Rotak Road corridor. And pretty much since it's all the same FAR, it sort of uh, has the same segregated planning norms, the city is going to look like this. So it could also look like this. And this is something that we are discussing. And it's um, why this? So firstly, the thing is that uh, whether or we like it or not, the property values around stations are going to go up. So we can use that as a way of giving housing to the middle class, to the higher income, middle class, to commercial, to mixed use, so that people using public transport, transport have these amenities, it's high density, and all these things are within walking distance of an MRT station. But if we don't like to live in a high rise, nobody is telling us to live in the high rise. We can go and live in our farmhouse or our low density, which is beyond the walking distance. So, so it is not that the whole city is going to become a concrete jungle, but yes, a person who wants to live under 20 story or a 60 story tower penthouse should have the right to also live like that. So it's basically about giving more variety of uh, choices to everybody. So the six norms, if uh, you have had a chance to go through the document in your folders, there are six main norms. Uh, just summarizing them very quickly, it's the first thing, primary thing, if we don't have walkability, if we don't have an friendly environment, there's no point doing TOD. If a person gets out and falls into a carriageway and he's almost dying, there's no point. It's not TOD. So um, the street design guidelines of UTPEC, which has actually been adopted and looked at by various cities around the country now, and has also been adopted by the IRC, uh, two IRC codes, uh, is a very uh, helpful guide on how to achieve uh, equitable street design. The second one, very important, is connectivity. What we talked about is that reaching the station directly, reaching from one neighborhood to the other, going, being able to go and pick up my child from the school. So we have to have a road network which leads you to these places. So uh, we've taken one plan here, which is one of our plans only. It's an older plan of Dwarka. So it's, um, uh, we can see this is the road network, but some of the roads are closed. So if I'm walking here and my shop is here, I actually can't walk from this house to here. I pretty much have to go around the block. So we can look at how some retrofitting can be done in these existing large block neighborhoods and getting in. So what are the principles? We have just laid out some very simple principles that a road network which is broken should be linked up and try to achieve this by small incentives, small retrofit projects. This has a huge impact on walkability. So even making golden footpaths will not help if the connections are not there and people are still having to take autos to cross streets. 
So uh, the second, uh, third one is multimodal interchange that we discussed at UTPEC in great length. Uh, this is one of our pilot projects uh, that DDA is taking up. It's in Chhatarpur station where we want to exemplify how different modes can be planned and a public place can be planned in a play way that it's humane and welcoming and it's not a chore for our poor common man to take the metro. Uh, fifth one is place making. Uh, what are the, how do we achieve the norms for this? So this is a typical market and you can see that the person who's shopping, our common man when he goes to the shop, he is going to walk in this red area. But the whole thing is occupied by vehicles. So this is a very simple planning norm change. So just transferring that photograph into a diagram, this is how it is. The footpath jo admi hai, wo dukan ke door chal raha hai aur gaadiyan dukan ke paas chal rahi hai, jabki ulta ho sakta hai. The Admi can be next to the building and the cars can be outside. So it could be like this, that um, the people are inside. So where did the cars go? So here is how where the cars go. So this is how it is in 3D. Your footpath is here, the cars are here. If we just change the norms so that the building can be on the footpath and the cars go behind. Because gadi sadak uh, the building ke saamne khadi kare ya aadha minute zyada drive karke piche paak kare, gadi ko farak nahi padta. Lekin jo aadmi bus mein pasina pasina ho ke aara hai, usko bahut farak padta hai ki uska footpath he has to fight five cars to get to the shop or the office. So this sort of a public realm change can happen only when the norm of uh, norms are changed. Therefore it's really important. So again, some montages, how this affects. This is a typical jo ye setback hamara hai, jo is mein aapne dekha. Iska dousra form hai ki kaafi jaga pe parking nahi ho ke boundary wall hoti hai. So boundary wall can be explored into making utility stores and the coffee shops and the electrical shops and the chemist shops that I was mentioning, which are not there in ITO. This is a montage of ITO, in fact. So can we explore that? Uh, this is another very important place, which is Nehru place. This place is pretty unsafe even during the day and definitely very unsafe at night. So if Nehru place were to be designed now, it probably it can't be. Lekin if we are probably making more district centers, so we will hopefully explore this. We would like to explore this. That can we have a mixed use district center? So here we have the same offices, almost the heights are the same. We've just added some residential. So iska kya matlab kyu add kya hai? Because when it's night, the shops will close and the house will be light hogi, and not just light, the footfalls will remain at night. People will be entering the home, leaving their homes, so it will create the place safer. So that, that, this is the importance of having mixed use rather than single use district. It really has an importance in making women in the city feel safe, not just our common man. So this again is a norm change which has been explained in detail in the document, you can read it. Um, and these are some of the critical norms that we are introducing to achieve what we have just showed you. Uh, then um, uh, the last, this is actually 2.6, which is high density. This is what is the sort of the main focus, which is density has to be there so that maximum people are living and working next to the station. So how does that turn out? Let's take a look. So this is a map. We have used the GIS database given to us by GSDL, plotted all the stations till phase three and uh, try to plot the walking distances. So the orange, the dark orange core that you see, the oak, egg, egg yolk is about uh, 300 meters, which is about five minutes walking time from the uh, alighting the train. So jab aap train se nikalte ho, this is the distance you can cover in five minutes. So it is the intense development. And this is a very big potential because this is an area job uh, train se nikal ke, agar main mode change kar rahi hon, this is the area where the mode changer is getting uh, served. Then uh, there is lighter yellow, yellow yoker wala hai, that is the 800 meter, which is a 10 minute walking distance. This is the area where people will have their offices and uh, homes. So this is where, a, it's a destination zone. So this is not necessarily more change, it's a destination where people are dispersing, working, living, and then coming back to the station to go home or whatever. And the uh, light yellow zone is the non-motorized, it's a transition zone. This is the area that transitions from the MRTS influence to the existing uh, zoned areas, which are not influence zones. So this is, uh, the, here so we have not applied the densification norms, we have not applied um, FAR bonuses, but these areas require retrofitting in terms of non-motorized transport because these people are using the metro, they are using buses, but their blocks, as we showed earlier, are not walkable, are not friendly to pedestrians. 
So they only need retrofitting. So the densification norms apply only to the TOD intense and standard zones. And this, if you zoom in at every station level, this is what that means. There's that 300 core, there's 800 um, uh, standard zone, and the NMT zone, which is a walking zone. Now, how does that translate into three dimensions? Again, these are boards that are there. You can see it in detail outside. Uh, it's uh, The intense zone is going to have high density and probably going to have a mix of high rise and low rise. If you have to follow our norms, there is no possibility. You cannot make a TOD which has boundary walls with 60-story uh, towers. It can't be made because in norms, you have to uh, frontage deni hi padegi. buildings and retail and commercial and residential have to face the street you have to build a street wall jise hum kehte hain and uske alawa aap towers bhi bana sakte hain towers ki spacing ki norms bhi main aapko dikhaungi to wo tower jungle nahi ban sakta kyunki norms itni stringent hai that you can't have a concrete jungle now going going out of the intense zone you have a more uh, diluter area which is going to be probably like 8 to 10 stories of buildings or you can just have mid rise uh, four to seven stories or have just four stories as well. If it is a more low income area, it can be only four story low rise. Um, and the transition zone as well as some portions of the standard zone could have a typology a building form that looks mainly at low rise, which is the rest of the city pretty much remains low rise. But the interesting thing is that in Tino pictures, ka density could be the same. Tino mein ye difference hai ki ho sakta hai first wala jo aapne dekha, अगर इसका एफ 3 है, for example, uh, या 2 and half है, इसके unit sizes बड़े होंगी, तो it will uh, basically look like this. Uh, इसका भी एफ 3 हो सकता है, लेकिन unit size हो सकता है, इसकी 40 square meter, 80 square meter हो. First वाले में unit size 150 square meter है, और इस वाले में unit size 25 square meters है. तो इसका क्या मतलब हुआ? इसका ये मतलब हुआ कि उस एरिया का वैल्यू सबसे ज्यादा है इट्स गोइंग टू अट्रैक्ट हाई इनकम इट्स गोइंग टू अट्रैक्ट लार्जर ऑफिसर्स हेड ऑफिसर्स ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट्स दे विल बी मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन दैट इंटेंस जोन व्हाइल द रेस्ट ऑफ द सिटी मे बी मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन द मिडिल जोन द मिडिल क्लास सिटी एंड दिस मे बी मोर ऑफ द मिक्स्ड द रिच एंड पुअर मिक्सिंग इन अ लो राइज टाइपोलॉजी सो आर नॉर्म्स अगेन आई विल नॉट बोर यू विद द डिटेल्स ऑफ द नॉर्म्स बट दे लुक एट अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ मिक्सिंग विद इन द टाइपोलॉजीज where housing commercial ka mix ho aur housing ke andar bhi humne unit sizes ki mixing kari hai ki so that there is a more variety in the market we had some preliminary discussions with developers of dmrc who are impaneled with dmrc and uh, they were not very adverse to trying the uh, smaller unit sizes they just wanted larger project sizes so it's something that we would like to explore jo mrganka baad mein baat karegi about the uh, testing of these mixes and also we have also said that you can't just agar humne bola hai ki 30% commercial ya 15% commercial aapko karna hi hai to what someone might do is just put one tower of office and then put a wall around it now the norms are such that you can't do that you will have to have your retail activate the street so sadak ko face karni padegi aapko aap ek dabbe ke andar dukan nahi band kar sakte so what this will do is this will create the safety and the place making aspects jo maine vision mein aapko samjhaya wo norms ke through achieve hoga agar norms sahi nahi hongi to wo kab wo dream ka dream hi rahega norms change hongi tabhi wo dream sach hoga so um, then of course we look at cross subsidy models etc looking at how parking is given we tend ki hum parking le aur usko ekdam station ke saam park and ride matlab so uh, but park and ride ko hum thoda sa 5 minute dur bhi rakh sakte hain kyunki jo station ka ekdam samne area hai wo dense use hona chahiye jo serve kare jo commuter hai usko park and ride in fact data so show karta hai ki metro only 1% people are using a car to access the metro station so why are we giving this area and west delhi ke almost sare metro station mein ye situation hai ki abadi dur hai aur parking is the thing dominating uh, stations entry which is really sad so um, i uh, i know it's getting a bit technical but this is an important issue jo workshop mein discuss hogi which is pani uh, and energy kahan se aayega so um, now the thing is that uh, firstly ye hai ki jo maine aapko graphics dikhaya jo is banner pe bhi hai uh, the change in the uh, allocation of built form and density in the city we are not adding people to the city we are only reorienting the way the city is growing so we are giving more people in closer to the mrts 
सो दैट्स ज़्यादा डेवलपमेंट दूर ना करना पड़े ज़्यादा लैंड ना अक्वायर करना पड़े आप डेंसली रहिए ताकि आपको पैदल और साइकिल से आप ज़्यादा चल सकते हैं तो इसमें पानी का जो रिक्वायरमेंट है उसका क्या क्या फ़ायदा है इसका ये फ़ायदा है कि जब हम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लोगों के साथ बात किए इट्स एक्ट इन सम ऑफ द एक्सपर्ट्स या नीरी इज या डॉक्टर कुमार इज या सो बेसिकली हमने देखा कि जो रिसाइकलिंग होता है पानी का दैट बिकम्स मोर फीजबल वेन इट्स हाई डेंसिटी बिकॉज यू डोंट हैव टू अगर आप रिसाइकलिंग प्लांट दो किलोमीटर दूर है आप पहले पानी सोवेज वहाँ लेके जाएँ फिर उसको वापस रिसाइकिल करके लेके आएँ बट अगर ज़्यादा लोग आधे किलोमीटर में रह रहे हैं तो द वाटर इज जस्ट गेटिंग रिसाइकल्ड एंड पम्प अप एंड डाउन सो योर इफेक्टिव कॉस्ट फॉर द गवर्नमेंट इज मच मोर मच सेफ्ड एंड ऑल्सो वॉट नीरी एंड अदर्स इन फैक्ट इंटरनेशनली ऑल्सो वी हैव सीन दैट सिक्सटी से एटी परसेंट पानी रिसाइकल हो सकता है so now how is the synergy of that working now when we came to the details we found ki jo domestic use hai wo zyada dependent hai mct ke pani pe lekin jo office use hai wo mct ka pani kam use karti hai lekin generate zyada karti hai sewage that was an interesting find because uh, jo office use sewage generate karti hai wo ya uh, grey water generate not just sewage even grey water jo generate karti hai wo recycle ho ke domestic use mein use ho sakta hai which means it's a mixed use ka there's another synergy that is there that we can recycle and reuse the water locally if the uh, typologies are mixed this is something we would like to explore more in the coming workshops and pilot projects that we are taking up and kalkaduma mein bhi hum isko try kar rahe hain um so this is sort of a flow chart for the water recycling and how the uh, landscape plays a very very important role in water recycling the landscape is the what landscape he recycle karti hai actually isme koi energy consumption nahi hai uh now coming to energy which is uh, power so हमारी जो नॉर्म्स हैं वो उसमें एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर है कि जब भी आप हाई राइज जाते हो तो शेडिंग बिकम्स एर इशू द मोमेंट यू हैव यू सी सम बिल्डिंग्स इन वैशाली फॉर एग्जांपल दे आर ऑलमोस्ट लाइक हाफ किलोमीटर बाय रियली बड़े बड़े मॉस्को जैसे स्लैब्स हैं अगर वो बन गया तो किसी घर में धूप नहीं आएगी धूप नहीं आएगी तो हम हमेशा लाइट जला के काम करेंगे या फिर ए चला के रखेंगे या हीटर चला के रखेंगे सो द नॉर्म्स अगेन आर सच दैट एवरी होम ऑन द कोल्डेस्ट विंटर डे विल एटलीस्ट गेट टू टू फोर आवर्स ऑफ सनलाइट सो दैट हेल्थ भी रहेगी रेजिडेंस की और पावर कंजाम सो वर्स्ट डे में इतना है तो ऑफकोर्स बेटर डेज में दिल गेट मोर डे लाइट एंड मोर सन एंड मोर हेल्थ सो द नॉर्म्स हैव बीन रिटर्न इन सच अ वे दैट यू कैनॉट हैव स्लैप टावर्स सो Uh, I'll just show you a graphic of that. So this is going to be really difficult. You can't have a building like this with these norms. Uh, 100 meter lumbi or puri green space, ya to shade hogi ya fir badi green space hogi, which will again be inhumane in size. So the norms basically say that you we would prefer people going doing towers, rather point towers, just to bolte hain, rather than doing slabs, which are not environment friendly. सो so, इसकी नॉर्म भी लिखी हुई हैं जो हम होपफुली डी यू के साथ और दूसरे एक्सपर्ट्स के साथ हम इनको थ्रैश आउट करेंगे और हम ये भी करेंगे कि जो भी बिल्डिंग अप्रूवल के लिए आएगी हमारा जी आई डेटाबेस का ये स्क्रीनशॉट है हम उस बिल्डिंग को जी आई डेटाबेस में डालेंगे चेक करेंगे कि उस इज इट नेगेटिवली अफेक्टिंग एनी बिल्डिंग अराउंड इट एंड इफ इट्स नेगेटिवली शेडिंग और इफेक्टिंग अ बिल्डिंग अराउंड इट वी कैन रिजेक्ट द डिज़ाइन और आज दम टू रिड्यूस द हाइट एट्सेट्रा सो दिस इज द एडवांटेज ऑल्सो हैप वी हैव ऑफ हैविंग अ वेरी गुड जी आई एस फॉर द सिटी so with that i'd like to sum it up so we are basically looking at a paradigm shift in planning and uh, ye ek master plan ka hi shot hai actually jab ye kiya gaya tha to hum uh, gaadi was the fashion statement duniya bhar mein lekin ab gaadi fashion statement nahi hai aur nahi rahega kyunki petrol bahut mehanga ho jayega so uh, basically this uh, this basically typology shows ki agar bus main road pe chal rahi hai to 5 ya 7 minute mein aap ghar tak nahi pahunch sakte लेकिन अगर जब ये नॉर्म्स फॉलो के जब सिटो सिटी की टाइपोलॉजी चेंज होगी तो आप 10 मिनट में घर पहुंच पाएंगे क्योंकि डेंसीफाई हो जाएगी सिटी धीरे धीरे और नॉर्म्स ऐसे चेंज होंगे कि सड़क सेफ और हमारा कॉमन मैन खुश होपफुली होगा सो जस्ट सिंस वी हैव सम पीपल हु कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड डेली ऑल्सो मैं बस ये बोलना चाहूँगी कि प्लीज़ बीवेयर ऑफ वॉट इज़ नॉट टी ओ डी सो जस्ट डूइंग हाई राइज बिल्डिंग और डूइंग अ हाई Uh, high building is not TOD, so uh, we need to be careful. Like this is a, a project near MRTS. It's a gated high-rise housing colony. It's a disaster. It's not TOD. So, because all the things I have explained to you, there is nothing in this. So, uh, I would like to end with this acknowledgement slide. These people have helped us a lot. Actually, this policy has been written by all these contributors. 
and in all these fields many of them are present in this and we would really like to thank you for your work over the last 3 years ki humne aapne bina payment ke bina kisi cheez ke they have selflessly helped us and of course i'd like to thank mr arke lakshman also uh, so with that i'll wrap up my presentation thank you very much